Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Destinies by Lucky Duck Games and with uh, the help of Mythic Games. It plays one to three players, is a fully competitive game that utilizes everything you see here and an application that you'll be using on either your tablet, your phone, or even your PC. And in this game, you'll be playing as one of many different characters in different stories, or you're trying to gather secret like clues and places of interest and items to fulfill your destiny. Each character is going to have more than one destiny, which will be on the back of their card, and you are going to try and accomplish this mission, whether it be to find the mysterious chalice, or save the sacred place, or defeat the werewolf. And if you're able to do so before any of the other players, you'll win. At the end of the game, however, to get that final mission completed, you're going to actually have to go through this uh, extended final fight or final sequence. And other players will have a chance to kind of catch up as you go through attempting to roll and succeed based on how well you did in the game. Because not only do you want to complete your destiny in the game, destinies, but you also want to make sure that your stats are high enough in order to, to, to do so. And in order to do so, you're going to need to do different missions mission side quests and things that are going to allow you to gather unique weapons and powers that will sophisticate yourself and give yourself the knowledge of the arcana. Will you succeed in beating out your opponents to your destiny or will you fail in trying? Find out in the mobile app board game Destinies. Let's take a look down below and I'll show you what comes in the game. So here we have Destinies currently set up for three players. Now I've already went into this game and explained most of how to play it in a previous video so I'm going to be quick about this one, but I wanted to show you the different components and how it is basically done. Basically, every player is going to get a player board. They're going to get a character, and there's a ton of different characters in the game. Uh, the previous one I had only had three, but now I've got a whole bunch to select from from all the different campaign modes. They'll get two die they'll be using for rolling, and then of course these die, which are exhausted to begin with, but every turn you can get one and you can use them on skill checks along with these ones, which are basically your die for the entire game. You're going to start with one gold and a specific unique item for your character. Uh, in the app, it will tell you not only the story of how the campaign is going to progress, but it's also going to tell you, okay, which characters do you want to play as? Here are the different stats for those characters. So for instance, the nobleman over here is going to have these four intelligence stats. You'll place them right above the numbers, dexterity, and of course, power. Tell you to take the gold. It'll tell you to exhaust your other three die, and of course, what item to take, and every item is numbered. And once you've done that for all three characters, then you'll move on to setting up the game board. Uh, the game board is um, going to be showing you the different tiles. I've already went ahead and laid them all out because I've already previously played this campaign. Um, and it'll tell you where you place your characters. It'll tell you where to place any additional characters, like, of course, the chaplain for the church. And then it's also going to tell you what tiles to place on the up, down, left, and right sides of the tile that you're currently all on. After that, then you're going to start by gaining a die. You're going to place it into your little pool here, which are basically the kind of tokens and items that you're going to start the game with. And then you'll have the opportunity to do uh, your turn. Your turn's pretty simple. On your turn, you can move up to two spaces. And when you do that, you'll be moving into a space. If it's previously been unoccupied, you will stop there. So for instance, if I wanted to take my guy and move him onto the space to my right, I'll flip this over and he's gonna move here and that will be his mo movement for the turn. If there was already a space discovered here and you wanted to move to this one from here, you can do that. You can go one and two. Uh, when you move to a location, being your first thing you do, you'll tap that on the uh, tablet. And then it's going to tell you what tile to place there. It will tell you the spaces to place uh, up, down, left, and right adjacent to it. And then it'll tell you any points of interest and any characters that you'll find on that space. So for instance, the woodcutter will be here and a point of interest being the inn will be here. After that, then any characters or uh, points of interest on your space, there's the mayor's house, will be accessible. You can go ahead and tap on one of them and then you can visit it and do what it says. And sometimes it'll just give you something, other times it will require you to do a skill check. Um, these things here, you can ask about your destiny, et cetera, et cetera, you'll use a QR code. And after you've finished um, doing all that, you'll move on to the next player's turn. And that's pretty much how it works. Move, interact with a character or a point of interest, pass, the next player gets a die, does the same thing, performs their movement. Every character's objective is to perform one of their two destinies, and there's two options, the left and the right one, which also come with a QR code so that nobody else can see it, but allowing players to know that you are, in fact, having play other characters in the game give you ideas and tips about how you complete your destinies, because there are multiple options and multiple routes to that victory. 
Uh, additionally, not only do you have the characters, points of interest, and your tiles here, but you're also going to have items. These items will, in fact, help you with completing skill checks. They're going to help you uh, by completing certain quests or side quests. And of course, they're also going to give you unique benefits that can last you throughout the game. And there's two different types of items. You have these guys here, the red ones, which are basically always actions. And then you're going to have the ones like these, which are the basic ones, which will let you discard them for a specific unique action. Depending on what you're trying to complete, it will determine what you get. And how it works is pretty simple too. If you want to, let's say, open a door, you'll be utilizing as many die as you want in this pool here. These always get discarded, however, once you've used them. And then you're going to check them. So in this case, I have a three, a three and an instant success. Three and three is six. Going to here, check to see how many of these circular cubes that we have here, uh, circular wooden discs, I should say, and then you'll add the successes to that. So one and then two. You'll put it into the app, determine what happens, discard any purple die, continue taking actions in that specific point of interest or with that person up until the point where you can't anymore, and then you will pass. Rinse and repeat. The game is going to come with unique things, like for instance, maybe you'll run across a trader in the woods, and I mean a trader as in a trader, a person who trades. Um, he'll pop over here if that happens. You'll use these unique markers to indicate what person is trading and what they're trading, indicating with that, and then maybe their items uh, based on what they can trade. You can place them on that little location, um, or little, little token, I should say, and put them over here in more room. Um, and people can buy stuff, and it'll tell you how much things cost in the top left-hand corner, um, and of course what they do on the bottom middle area. And everything is numbered. Everything is going to be tell, telling you exactly what you need and where you need to go, now based on the number, based on the app, which is super nice. <laughs> Once you complete your objective, you'll go into this kind of final, uh, final turn where you're going to be trying to perform your destiny, and other players will have a chance to catch up. And based on how well you did, how many different um, skills you managed to upgrade, because you can actually move these modulars, modules up as you progress throughout the game by gaining experience, which are these tokens here, and that basically means that as you, you know, have these guys farther up on the track, when you roll the die, if you roll a six, instead of just getting one like last time, I would check here, one, two, three, and four more chances to succeed. Just remember a little bonus tip, three is always a good number to succeed with. <laughs> but you always are gonna to wanna to push these up because during the final destiny, your final challenge, the more successes you get, the faster you can complete it, which guarantees you the win, provided nobody else is also on their final destiny, which could be the case. The game kind of works to, works in the same time. Uh, for the most part, it's just how well you complete your tasks and what you do on your turn. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Like I said, the app has a multitude of different uh, scenarios you can take. I think this one has one, two, three, four, and five different uh, campaign modes you can play with. However, there is also, of course, expansion content you can pick up online, giving you not only more physical components, but also additional different um, tiles and whatnot that you can use uh, to play the game so that you can progress through even more destinies. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. We'll come up and I'll give you my review now. So Destinies in a nutshell is a game in which you're using your characters to move around a board in association with the application. And the application is kind of intuitive as to what you do depending on the player. So for instance, if the uh, witch were to go to a certain area and defeat the wolf, the wolf is gone and will not be affecting any of the other players. And in fact, maybe the wolf will have moved if she didn't kill him and go to a different location in which somebody else can kind of deal with it. So the world is interactive based on uh, what you do and it affects other players differently. And based on your choices, you'll go ahead and click on these buttons and it'll explain how things work. And it's very, very straightforward. You're going to be simply moving, taking part in an action or a point of interest, and passing. At the beginning of your turn, you'll be gathering certain things. You'll be an exhausting die that you can use during skill checks and hopefully using your items to your benefit. Destinies in general, and I mean destinies of the players, are, attempt, are, are kind of uh, commingled with other players' destinies. For instance, one person might need magical items in order to defeat the werewolf, while another person might need magical items in order to uh, save the witch's farmhand from the witch's utter you know, terror. But they kind of work together in a way, and because of that, the different storylines and story modes are compatible with each other uh, and, and change the flow of the game. You might not be able to gather a certain objective for one destiny because somebody else has completed it so you're going to need to try and move on to another one which is probably something that might irritate certain players like oh i need these magical items i can't get them now because fred and jane over here already got most of them and i need to have three and there's only two left now i 
got to do a different destiny, but I've already been progressing through this one. Uh, and, and so you're going to need to try and kind of sparse out yourself and see what your competition is doing and determine what items they're gathering, what items you need to gather, and how it's going to affect your gameplay. Uh, the game here is, like I said, fully interactive and it utilizes the, the board itself here and the app will actually kind of, based on what you do here, you tap it on the app and it will show you as well. So as on this one here, I tap the right hand side and it just, you know, it flips over this guy here. Uh, there is a ton of different scenarios and it comes with all of these tiles, which is basically used as the board. It has a fog of war type feel to it, which is really nice. I, I love this aspect of the game. I reviewed this game in the past, but I only had the base like prototype version of the game. Uh, this one here is, is is so much better. It's very, very nice. The app is so much more intuitive. They made changes to a lot of the things I had problems with, and I'm very, very happy about that. There's a ton of characters in this game that you'll be utilizing. As you can see, all across the table are strewn tons of wonderful figurines. I'm guessing a Mythic had something to do with this because they make wonderful character designs. Um, the dice are high quality. The boards are high quality. Everything is extra thick. The character cards utilize QR codes to determine things about your destiny. You know, you'll be utilizing these throughout the game, uh, along with items too, which have QR codes. So if you want to enact, um, maybe meet the mystic and give them a talisman, you can do that. Or defeat the mystic with the talisman, there's a possibility of that as well. Certain things are going to require skill checks. You can use items discarding them in order to perform those actions or save them to attempt to use it for something very specific. Maybe there's a stone, and maybe you have a sword, and maybe you want to put the sword into that stone. <laughs> well, in that case, you can do that if it allows you to do that, obviously. Or perhaps you just want to discard the sword in order to defeat a monster, or just utilize it for a random skill check. It has a lot of variations for all the different items, which means the items can all be kind of interactive with all the different campaign modes. Uh, this has, I believe, like, uh, I can't remember exactly how many different, like, levels you can do. I think there's at least five or six. Um, and, and with that comes the expansions. You'll be able to purchase digital expansion content. And I imagine in the future, if you can't already, purchase the expandable component content of the game. Uh, that's one little qualm I've always had with these type of games. Is this kind of like a DLC add-on. You always have to purchase you know, more of the things. But it's, it's, it is what it is as far as that goes. Uh, the fact that you are able to purchase more content specifically, or you can of course purchase the physical content, just giving you more gameplay is going to be, is, is nice. And specifically for a game like this, because once you've gone through one of the modes, like for instance, the very basic mode, uh, not likely you want to want to play it that many more times. Um, and this is actually, another, this is one of those games kind of like the escape games where once I kind of finish all the different modes, all the different gameplay, I'm going to probably pass this on to a friend and have them play it. Uh, because you can play this again and there is a bunch of different routes that you can take. But for me, after I finish the storyline, I know the ending, I know the different characters' destinies, I'm pretty much done with it and I want to move on to the next one. Which is why for some of you who want to keep the game, there's going to be that DLC expansion as well as of course the physical components uh, to it. So you can keep moving through with your uh, destinies. If this was Solomon Kane, i just keep it regardless because I, I, I love that theme. But uh, this one specifically I'll just be playing through each of the campaign modes and passing it on. So just, just as an FYI. Uh, overall though, this game is beautiful. All the components are high quality, tons of beautiful miniatures. There's tons of different game modes you can play. You're going to go through this for hours and hours. It's, you know, the price of a movie is 20 bucks. And with this here, you're getting like six, seven movies, if not more, uh, for, for, I think it's like, I don't know, like 40, 50 bucks. So you're getting a good deal here. And you get to play with family and friends around the table with beautiful high quality artwork. It's, it, it this game uh, was a huge, I think it was in my top five uh, last year. And it, 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 it still holds up. I still really enjoyed this game. My cousin played this and she typically doesn't like competitive games and she played all the way through this. The, the, so the campaigns can go up to an hour and a half and we played through the entire thing and she usually is not the type to play through a long game like that. And she did because the storyline is so so immersive and you feel like you're trying to complete your destiny, which is nice. I could ramble on more about this game, but I think I'm gonna cut it here because I think you have an idea of my previous video. And the new one here that I simply love, Destinies, it is a beautifully interactive game when it comes to an app and a board game. If you don't mind the length of the game, if you don't mind the fact that after you're done with the campaign, for most of us here, we're probably going to move on to the next one or pass the game on. And for those of you, you know, has the, the combinational fact, then, you know, you're going to enjoy this game. I highly recommend you take a look at it and still one of my top favorite games from Lucky Duck Games and still rivaling in my top 10 for this year. We'll, we'll see. 
I don't know if I'll give it to it this time, but because I already did, so I think that'd be kind of cheating. Bye, mm. Dante. And outro time. Thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game Destinies. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can pick it up from Lucky Duck. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more on the website. Moonshell is coming along. I've got no new updates. You can see the, the video update from Callie. I'll post it somewhere. Uh, of all of the things that we've been going through, this was just yesterday, so you can go ahead and check a look, uh, take a look at that as well. Of course, Discord. Our live streams are going to be on Sundays every week now, 5.30 p.m. PST to 8. It's just an easier time. We're transitioning from Wednesday, so for those of you who are on our, our live streams who are watching this video, it's going to be Sundays at 5.30. Um, that's it guys, Patreon members, I thank you very much for supporting us here. I'm excited to uh, create some more content with you guys and so keep giving you weekly updates. As always, I look forward to completing my destiny with you, no, 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 my destiny without you next time. <laughs>